Welcome to the Phylate RDX Relationship Facilitator module. Here you will learn what the Relationship Facilitator is and how it is used. The Relationship Facilitator is a utility which is used to create, populate, and maintain a data set containing information about DB2 table relationships. Application relationships may be defined between DB2 tables, between a DB2 table and an MVS object, such as a vSAM file, and between a DB2 table and an IMS database. Relationships between MVS files also may be defined. The focus here will be on DB2 tables. We begin with a discussion on table information. Here is a typical diagram of the tables in a small order entry system. The relationships, that is, which tables are the parents and which tables are the dependents, are usually indicated by the connecting lines. The formal primary and foreign key definitions are found in the DB2 catalog. Let's have a closer look. Here we have opened an edit session on the customers table and the primary key is as shown. Doing the same for the remaining tables we see contacts, orders, line items, parts, and finally suppliers. These table relationships are stored in the DB2 catalog. The Referential Integrity, or RI, is maintained by DB2 itself. All foreign keys have matching primary keys, and rogues are not allowed. This table set has another condition. The customer and order tables are used as if the customer table is the parent table and the order table is the dependent, but that informal relationship is not defined in the DB2 catalog. In this application relationship, or AR, program code is responsible for key verification. The good news here is that the relationship facilitator can handle this situation. Let's have a look at the relationship facilitator and put all of this together. We begin at the primary menu and choose option 1, then option A to allocate a relationship file. One such file may be shared among developers or each developer may allocate their own as needed. Next, a cluster name is chosen and a confirmation message will appear. With that file in place, we may begin to populate it. We choose option 5 to load the RI relationships. We choose the order table and the new relationship file. Next, we choose the RI load option for everything related to this table. The detail shows the parent dependent relationships surrounding the order table found in the DB2 catalog. The status indicates that the relationship information displayed is not in the relationship file. We then select all relationships for loading and the load is confirmed.
for the application relationship, the graphic reminds us that the customer table is the parent and the order table is the dependent. We choose option 3 to add an application relationship to the file, then specify the customer table. On the next panel, we choose DB2 tables for both the parent and dependent object types. The other object types are covered in separate modules. On the next panel, the parent table is specified and the dependent table is specified. For those who may not be familiar with their tables, there is an option to have FileAid suggest possible column relationships. Here we decline and proceed. We now see the column relationships panel used to match the parent table columns and the dependent table columns that are used as keys. We see that the customer number column on the customer table relates to the cust num column on the order table. Noting that the cust num column is the second column, we have posted a 2 in the command column in front of customer number. Pressing enter to continue displays the extended column relationship definition window. This allows specification of partial column matches. In this case, both columns are the same length so we simply press enter to continue. The mapping for this example is now complete and we press enter again to continue. The application relationship information has been added to the relationship file. All of the table relationship information should now be contained in the relationship file Let's have a look. We choose option 1 to browse all existing relationships for the customer table. The display shows the pertinent tables and the relationship types. At this point there is one last topic to cover, the conditional or data-driven application relationship. To begin the illustration, we select the existing application relationship for modification. Entering the conditional primary command displays a temporary selection criteria menu. Choosing option 1 displays the same selection criteria options that are available in FileAid MVS. These are available but not commonly used. Back on the menu, choosing option 2 displays the standard FileAid MVS formatted selection criteria panel. Here we specify criteria that will limit the extraction to only those customers in the three states shown. Backing out confirms one selection set. Backing out another level confirms the relationship modification. Upon exit and return, the relationship is tagged as conditional. This concludes this module. Thank you.